Yo, it's Lux from Server Pro, and welcome to this tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to use the Survival Games plugin. First of all, install the Survival Games Spigot plugin by searching it in the control panel. You will also need World Edit to define the arenas. Now let's configure it. Open the file manager, then go to plugins, and then go to Survival Games, and finally open the config.yml. A lot of this information is commented, which explains what each part means, so you don't have to refer to this video all the time. I'm going to go over some of the most important parts. Let's scroll down to here and where it says auto start players, that means how many players are needed for the countdown to begin. So let's say you have 24 spawn points in your arena, you'll only need 20 waiting for the countdown to begin automatically. And the next part is the auto start time, which is how many seconds the countdown timer will have. You also have the auto start vote option, which is the percentage of players who do slash SG vote for the game to begin. A nice feature of this plugin is that when you're in game, you can make it so that the player cannot use any other commands except the SG commands, which can prevent some interference with other plugins. To make sure that's on, put true in the disallowed command section. Of course, you can whitelist any commands you want to make it possible to use within the arena. Just make sure you write it down in the list here. You can also set the grace period in which players cannot attack each other. I'm going to have it as 10 seconds. So the restock chest option is if the chests will be refilled after the first night. If you have this enabled, the time of the world will be set today. I'm not sure exactly how this will work on multiple arenas in the same world, but if you have an arena per world, this should not give you any problems. The next option is if the chests get refilled every night. By default, that's off. The clear chest option is if the chests which have not been looted will also be refilled. If you have this set to false, then it will just add more items into the chest without removing the old ones. If this is set to true however, it will reset the chest completely and give you the new items in it. The list here are whitelist of what can be placed or broken within the arena and the list here is which entities are left alone when the map resets. For example, if there's an item frame in one of the buildings in your arenas, then it will stay there as long as it's on the list. If the entity is not on the list, it will remove it. The next two sections are how you want your endgame set up. For example, you can have a deathmatch in which players will be teleported to the center of the map, or you can have chests spawn next to the players with loot, as well as having lightning strikes at the location of each player. Going down here is the system reward, so if you want players to win something at the end of a game for staying alive, you can also enable that. At the bottom here you can also enable stats, but we're not going to go into this. For now we're finished with the config, let's move on to kits.yml. This one is pretty simple and it basically enables or disable kits within the survival games plugin. You can name your kits, have them cost the player money, and of course it's up to you what you have those kits to be, so you can have whatever custom kits you want. The next document we'll look through is spawns.yml. So let's open that, and here you'll see the arenas and spawn points for each arena. This number is the arena ID. All of this defines the location of spawn point number one. Count here is how many spawn points there are per arena. I have four at the moment, meaning the max number of players that can join the arena is four. This is the second spawn point, the third one is here, and etc. This document updates automatically and you don't need to touch it. So yeah, not much to say here, let's go into systems.yml and see what's there. So this here tells me how many arenas there are, and below here are the arena IDs, the arena coordinates, what world they're in, and if it's enabled or not. If we go down here, you'll see the lobby and where the spawn for the lobby is. You can also set up signs, so here I have the ID number of the sign, and where it says ID in small letters, that's the arena ID in which it's going to join, as well as having other information here too. Again, this is updated automatically, so you don't need to touch this. We're going to actually skip messages.yml as it's self-explanatory, so let's open up the chess.yml document. The chess system works in levels and it's a bit confusing. You need to place different colored wool inside the chest to determine the level of it. The format of how the chest is supposed to be is here. So for example, this level one chest could have up to all of these items. The minimum amount of items that could be in that chest is 4 and the maximum is 10 as defined by these two options here. The max increase determines the level of the chest just before it's opened. Of course you have to place different colored wool inside the chest for this function to work and the different colors also affect the level of the chest. If you want to read 
more about this, there's a link down below with the GitHub page on this plugin where it explains every detail in writing. I suggest you read that and if you need to make any changes you can, but at the moment the chest system is fairly balanced. Oh and also you can make as many chest levels as you want. Okay so now that's out of the way, it looks like the configs here are done. I'm not going to go over setting up permissions, but all the permission nodes that you'll need are found on the spigot page. Since we've set everything up, let's restart the server to apply the changes and get right into the game. As you can see I have one demo arena already set up here, I'll show you how to create another one in just a moment. But before that we need to set up a lobby spawn point. This is where the player is going to be teleported when they leave the SG arena. I'm going to make it here next to the survival games wall. To create a lobby spawn point type in slash SG set lobby spawn. Ok so let's set up the arena. You firstly need to define the arena area. I'm going to make it a square arena to make it easy. You can have whatever shape arena that world edit allows you to have. Once you define the area type slash sg create arena and that's the arena created. Now what we need are spawn points. Like I said before the number of spawn point determines the number of players that can play in the arena. To create the first spawn point type in slash sg set spawn 1. Then to make the next one just type in slash sg set spawn next and it will create the second one and the third one and the next one. Of course if you want to edit the arena you will have to disable it. So let's say I want to remove this chest from here. I have to disable the arena first by typing slash sg disable and then the id number of the arena. Do the changes and then enable it by typing in slash sg enable and then 2. Now the last thing I want to show you are the signs which you can create. As you can see here I have a wall built already with a demo arena number 1 showing here. Let's add the arena that we just created. Select the signs you want to use, it has to be two signs because one sign is going to have the info on it and the other one is going to be the one you have to click on to join the arena. Once you've selected the signs with world edit type in slash sg add wall and then the arena id. Boom! It's as easy as that. And that's the end of the tutorial. If you need any more information visit the Spigot page or the GitHub page for the plugin. If you are having issues you can contact our support team. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.